The Bible is not the only holy book that describes riches beyond compare. Two Hindu texts tell the story of incredible fortunes created by a magical gem. You don't have to mine the treasure or trade for it. It's magically created as if from thin air by an artifact known as the Siamantica gem. The gem originally belongs to Surya, the Hindu god of the sun, who wears it around his neck. One day, according to the story, Satrajit, a nobleman and devotee of Surya, is praying when he sees the god before him. The sun god is in an indistinct and fiery shape, so Satrajit asks him if he can take a less blinding appearance. Surya removes the Siamantaka gem from around his neck and reveals his true form. Surya is short in stature with a body like burnished copper and reddish eyes. Satrajit offers his adorations, his devotions, and the sun god grants him a wish. Satrajit wishes for the jewel itself. This gem can produce vast amounts of wealth. It simply appears, so it's something like a wealth generator. Something like 170 pounds of gold every day, which is the equivalent of about $5 million every single day. The Siamantica gem is also believed to offer protection, preventing calamities like floods, droughts, earthquakes, and famines. Wherever it remains is a land of peace and prosperity. But there's a catch. Some Hindu experts claim that the jewel seems to amplify karma. It only brings gold and good fortune to those who are pure of heart. Because of that, it can only be safely worn by a god or a woman. So a vain and power-hungry man may suffer terrible consequences. Satrajit becomes incredibly wealthy thanks to the gem, but one day, Satrajit's brother, Prasena, takes the jewel and wears it around his neck, proudly displaying the wealth of his family. While riding his horse through the forest, he's attacked by a lion and killed. This may be the first fatality at the hands of the gem, but it won't be the last. Periodically, the gem may not be mentioned for a few generations, but it continues to resurface through Indian royal families. One of the more interesting stories is that of King Porus. He's said to possess the gem when, in 326 BC, his armies come up against Alexander the Great. Porus loses, but Alexander makes him the governor of all his same original territories, plus gives him a whole bunch more. Now, not a lot of people come away richer after losing a battle to Alexander the Great. Maybe there is something to the legend of the gem. Ultimately, Porus was assassinated by one of Alexander's generals, who is motivated by greed for the Siamantica gem. And that's it. The Siamantica gem goes missing. We don't have any records that say what happens to it after that, at least for 2,300 years. That is, until 2009, when a pair of researchers claimed to have rediscovered it, hiding in plain sight. Lionel and Patricia Fanthorpe publish Secrets of the World's Undiscovered Treasures, in which they say that the Siamantaka gem has indeed survived into modern times. They posit that the reason everyone thought it was lost to history was actually simply because it had begun going by a different name. They think the Siamantaka gem is now being called the Kohinoor diamond. The Kohinoor is one of the largest cut diamonds in history. Its name means mountain of light in Persian, and it weighs a whopping 105.6 carats. According to the Fanthorpes, they've uncovered Sanskrit records that date the Kohinoor back over 5,000 years when it was originally known as Siamantaka. Their histories certainly have some parallels. Like the Siamantaka, the Kohinoor has also bestowed incredible wealth to its owners. The Kohinoor diamond first appears in the reign of the Mughal emperor Shah Jahan. Shah Jahan is best known as the creator of the Taj Mahal. 
He also had a beautiful throne constructed for himself called the Peacock Throne. The Peacock Throne is made to look like a peacock with its tail feathers extended, and its head was formed by the Kohinoor diamond. The final cost of the throne is said to be nearly four times as much as the Taj Mahal. Shah Jahan is said to be the wealthiest man in the world during his rule, with an empire that brings in 220 million rupees per year. There's no accurate way to convert that into today's money, but it's a staggering amount for the time. In addition to his fabulous throne and lavish palaces, he has 50 million rupees worth of jewelry. But like the Siamantica, the Kohinoor is also believed to be cursed. When Delhi is attacked by the Persian Nadir Shah in 1739, the peacock throne and the Kohinoor are seized. Nadir Shah is eventually assassinated, stabbed to death by 15 co-conspirators. Again, it passes through the hands of various kings until it reaches the Sikh Empire in 1813, where Maharaja Ranjit Singh captures it from the Durrani dynasty. Singh may actually experience the worst fate of all the gem's holders. His entire ruling family is dismantled. After his death in 1839, his son is dethroned and imprisoned within four months. His grandson rules only for a year before dying at the age of 19. To believers, this is another sign that the Kohinoor and the Siamantaka are one and the same. In Hindu myth, only a god or a woman can wear the Siamantaka with impunity, and trouble comes calling for rulers who seize the jewel. By 1843, the kingdom and the Kohinoor are held by the only surviving male heir, five-year-old Dulip Singh. Dulip Singh is the final Maharaja of the Sikh Empire. By the time he's 10 years old, the empire has been completely dismantled by the British. The British force Dulip to sign an amendment in which he renounces any claim to sovereignty over his empire. Even more interestingly, this document specifically says that he has to give up the Kohinoor. It's such a powerful and prestigious gem that Queen Victoria wants it for herself. Queen Victoria wears this Kohinoor diamond initially as a brooch. After Queen Victoria, this gem then passes into the Crown Jewels collection, where it's added to a crown that is worn by the Queen Mother, uh, mother of Elizabeth II. To this day, the diamond is only allowed to be worn by female members of the royal family. This seems related to the superstition that the Siamantaka gem can only be worn safely by a woman. It was very specifically left out of King Charles's recent coronation ceremony, for instance. It remains to be seen who will be the next to wear the jewel.